everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. Ooh, I've got a great young author today to talk to, and you're going to love him. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to a really fun Cape Conversations. I am with a wonderful person who is a teacher at our local Sandwich High School and the head of the English department, Scott Childress. Scott, good to see you. Nice to see you too. So, how exciting. You're an author. You're head of the English department. What else do you do? Um, I swim. Oh, there you <laughs> so, go. He yeah. swim, all right. He can swim. Yay! <laughs> and obviously I write a lot. Um, yeah. And uh, I just love, you know, bike rides, running, anything that gets me outside and in nature. Uh, oh, hiking. My wife and I love to go hiking. Oh, that's great. So. That's wonderful. Well, so Scott, tell me, how did you start writing? Oh, wow. Uh, my first writing probably began when I was in the Marine Corps. Wait, and you were a Marine? I was, yes. Oh my God, Semper Fi. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Yes, ma'am. Never leave anybody behind. That's I know right. all the, my brother was a Marine, that's why I know all that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, what I would do, um, the guys, uh, you know, when we were overseas, they had girlfriends, wives, whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was really good at poetry. I could make a poem up about anybody pretty much off the top of my head. Wow. So they would pay me to write a poem. No way. About their wife or girlfriend yeah. and um, and they would sign their name to it and say it came from them. <laughs> and then they Perfect. Yeah, their their wife or their Wait girlfriend would love it. So You were a modern day Marine Sereno de Bergerac. Yes, I was a, I was a ghost writer, yeah, <laughs> basically. So Oh that's great. Now do you do it today? I don't write a lot of poetry today. I do stick more with fiction mostly yeah, and um, yeah. But I mean do you have friends like uh, male friends, you know, other no, husbands who no. call you up and go, hey Scott, can you write me a poem for my anniversary? Oh, I got tired of writing poems uh, for all the guys in there, so I, when I got out of the Marines, I was so done with it. it. Yep, nope, didn't tell anybody else about my poetry, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, how long were you in the service? I just did four years out of high school, and then yeah. um, I was like, okay, this is good, and uh, I decided <laughs> to go to college, and you know, nice. it's, it was a good way to grow up and yeah. figure out who I was and yeah. what I wanted to do, and um, as a, I was 17 when I went in. Wow. So yeah. it really Your helped. Your parents had to sign. They did. My yeah. father was a Marine as well, so yeah, he was for it. My mom, not so much, but yeah, <laughs> she ahead. relented and because uh, I would have waited just a few months till I turned 18 anyway. And then, um, so yeah, so I did my time. I was stationed in Hawaii and was in Japan and Okinawa, the Philippines, so mm -hmm. got to see the world. Nice. Um, I was from a small town in North Carolina, a small tobacco town in the middle oh, of nowhere. Yeah. Wow. 45 people in my graduating class. Oh my gosh. So it was a bit what, of what, a... What part of North Carolina? Southern North Carolina? Western? Eastern. Um, oh, okay. Mid-eastern, Coastal... about okay. an hour east of Raleigh. Oh, okay. Two hours west of the coast. Okay. Uh, we were a uh, big, uh, big tobacco farming area. That's yeah. where most of the money came from for that county yeah. and town. And yeah. It was... Yeah, it was a different experience when I got out of there and went to California and LA and I mean You saw I'd different kinds of people. Never been to a city bigger than Raleigh until then. So wow. <laughs> it was a wake Must up call. Something, yeah. Yeah. And um, so when you got out of the service, you did you become a you went to college, did you become a teacher in college? Is that where you studied to be a teacher? Or? Eventually. I studied theater to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and I ended up in uh, communications and literature. I double majored in um, communications and got a degree in that, as well as a degree in um, literature, too. Wow. And I just fell into teaching. I was tutoring kids um, at home. I, was, mm -hmm. uh, I worked at a video store in the summers to get extra money, and there were these kids who always caused problems, and I ended up, I don't know how, I don't remember how this happened, but yeah. I somehow ended up tutoring them and teaching yeah. them about Shakespeare and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, that's what got me interested in education. So. Nice. And nice. Then, you know, Did you teach him all those words in Shakespeare you can say and call people <laughs> terrible <laughs> yeah. things? But it doesn't sound like it's terrible, but it is terrible things. Because it's a Shakespearean insult. Nobody that's knows. That's right. Nobody so, knows. That's yeah. the best part. Yeah. And that's I was great. good at it because I understood the kids and yeah. I could work with them. I was a Marine for crying out loud. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd heard all those words. <laughs> exactly. And behavior <laughs> issues, you know, we had plenty of them in the yeah. Marines. So, yeah. you know. Oh, that's great. So, where did you go to school? 
East Carolina University okay. in Greenville. Um, they sure. are uh, one of the top educational schools in the country, mm -hmm. and um, they're also one of the top theater schools in the country too. It's I didn't know. know. Oh, wait a minute. I did know that. Sandra Bullock, uh, yeah, Kevin Williamson, I, a lot yeah, of high-profile yeah, people have yeah. graduated from there in um, film. So yeah. yeah. Well, I've, it's it's um, it's funny because a, a friend of mine's daughter is actually on Long Island at Long Island University. I'm going to say that's the name of it, but it's also a theater school. Oh, cool. But she applied. I guess she had applied uh, to Greenville. She oh, decided cool. she didn't want to go south. But yeah. um, so anyway. Um, yeah, I, I had heard of the school. My kids had lived in Asheville, which is kind of far away from where mm, you grew definitely, up. Definitely, yeah, on the other side uh, of the, the state. Mountains, yeah, the mountain area. And I did have kids for a while and uh, who went to uh, UNC. Oh, cool. Yeah, graduate work. So um, Anyway, so I'm familiar with North Carolina. It's a beautiful state. Mm -hmm. Are you glad you're from there, or do you want to go back? I am happy here. Good. Uh, I, I get um, it gets so hot there in the summer, yeah. and the summers here are so beautiful, and yeah. uh, I kind of like it colder too. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, then that's a good thing. It does get humid down there. Definitely, the air gets Definitely. thick, mm -hmm. <laughs> very thick. Mm -hmm. So, how long? When did you come to Sandwich? Eleven years ago. Uh, wow. I'm, I lived in Greenville before then, and was teaching in Greenville. Mm -hmm. um, at a high school there mm -hmm. and my wife I met her when she was doing her residency East Carolina also has a really good medical school mm -hmm. and um, huge hospital mm -hmm. and she uh, was doing her residency for OBGYN and oh, wow. lived one floor below me uh, she had been there for three years <laughs> yeah. and uh, and I never met her and then she got a puppy and I had a dog that was three years old mm -hmm. her puppy was a Belgian Malinois which is a isn't that a big dog they're fairly big, around 60 pounds or yeah, so. Yeah, that's a big dog. Uh, I had a retriever who was uh, 90 pounds, <laughs> a little bigger, but yeah. not in good shape. The yeah. Belgian was just like, they're wiry, kind of yeah. lithe, um, highly intelligent mm -hmm. uh, dogs. They use them for military dogs and police mm -hmm. dogs. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what the puppy was when she got it. Oh. And this dog had so much energy and required so much time, and she was doing her residency, which means like 100-hour weeks. So she went to you. And to I'm a teacher. And uh, I had the summers off, and I offered to dog sit her dog since my dog got along with hers. My dog to, would put up. What a line to meet a woman! I'll take care of your dog for you. And the rest is history. So <laughs> we got married, and she got a job uh, in Fall River, and we bought a house. In a hospital there is. Uh, Charlton Hospital. Oh, she's yeah. uh, at a private office, but she works out of Charlton too. Yeah. So um, she's a partner in a private practice. Oh wow. Uh, but anyway, so she's so we bought a house in Bristol, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and we when we moved up here, and I looked for a job anywhere within an hour, and uh, sandwich was the one I landed. Wow, <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. Good for you. So uh, when you came in, though, you just taught English, regular English, and then you became head of the department, right? I was an English teacher, and I actually was the first broadcast teacher at Sandwich High School. No way. Up because of my degree in communications, I actually oh, had some background in it. I didn't realize that. And uh, so I was the the program had just been a club that Sandwich Community Television ran. Right, I knew that part. I knew. And the yeah. first year, this the year I came was the first year we actually offered a class. It was just one elective. Wow. Now it's a whole program. There are two yeah. teachers, yeah. two and a half teachers. There's like another teacher that teaches some courses. So there's, it's a Blossomed. much different program than it was then. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and now I just teach uh, two classes because I'm department chair. So, oh, wonderful. Uh, yearbook and um, a 12th grade English class. Oh, wonderful. Yearbook. Yes. I was assistant editor of my yearbook. Awesome. <laughs> Got in every picture. It's a tough job, too. <laughs> yeah. tough, well, it is a tough job. It is a tough job. Actually, the editor had the tough job. Mm -hmm. She had me as an assistant. Um, anyway, you have now, is this your first book? It's the third book I've written. It's the first book that I've published through a publisher. Excellent. Well, Ronnie Willow and the Silver Mask. <laughs> Excellent. So tell me a little bit why this book. So it's a young adult book and the inspiration... And what age bracket is a young adult? Probably for this book I'd say 11 and up. Okay. Uh, so a 17 year old could read it? Definitely. Okay. A uh, 50 year old could read it, oh, if that's true, anybody <laughs> could read it. It's a, it's a, it's, I've Keep actually had interest, some guess, people, so. um, adults, like who bought it for their kids and started reading it and said, yeah, I'm finishing this before I give it to my kid. <laughs> so, because <laughs> oh, I got interested in it. Yeah. It moves really fast. It's yeah. a pretty fast paced book. Um, 
uh, as I intended it to be because kids have such a shorter attention span now. Sure. So, uh, so Ronnie is a um, girl who's moved from a small town in North Carolina to mm -hmm. Cape Cod, uh -huh. and she's starting her freshman year. And as with any kid trying to adjust to um, to a new town, a new culture, mm -hmm. a new group of people. So, you know, she's meeting new people and making new friends and all the struggles that come with that. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, they end up um, going out on this old schooner and they discover an old diary. Oh. Old, uh, written from 1980. So, yeah. Uh, well, which, I know. The kids, that would be old. <laughs> the kids, it's ancient, ancient exactly. Ancient history. Uh, but they don't know who wrote it. So they oh. start trying to investigate to figure out uh -huh. who the person is. And it starts off innocent enough, but as everything builds, they find out that there's some more dangerous aspects oh. to their searching um, because of what happened to the person who wrote it. So I won't give away the mystery. No, but no, 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 don't give away the mystery. That's the, that's the drama. So. so how would I get this book if I wanted to buy it? Titcombs has a number of copies oh, right now, some that are signed. Titcombs has Ronnie Willow and the Silver Mask. <laughs> the Sandwich Arts Alliance downtown, they have some copies as oh, well. Oh, wonderful, yeah. Uh, the Sandwich Public Library has a copy, um, as well as you can buy it at Barnes & Noble, online oh, through well. Amazon, nice. Target, Hudson Books, anywhere that sells books, it's right. available to order. Right. Oh, you, so you saw, I didn't realize, as my daughter just wrote a book, but I didn't realize that Hudson Books is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that until she told me. I said, Hudson Books in Ohio? She said, yeah, it's a huge deal across the country, I guess. Yeah, it's because they're in all the airports. I guess that's why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I had no idea. Worldwide, yeah. yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> I didn't know that. So tell me more about Ronnie. Is she based on anybody you knew? Is she a composite of, of, a, of different kids you've met? Anybody maybe from your past? Uh, definitely a composite of kids I've taught over the years. Yeah. This is my 21st year in education, and I've probably wow. taught a couple of thousand students yeah. over the years between North Carolina and here. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I came up with the character, i got to give credit where credit's due. We came up with the name probably 12 years ago. I had no story for it. Twilight had come out, yeah. and the kids in my yearbook class in North Carolina, mostly girls, they were talking about how they didn't think Bella was that positive of a role model for girls. Mm. Um, so I was like, well, well I'm definitely gonna... in the movie Moody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, I want to write a book where we do have a positive role model for mm -hmm. girls. And uh, we came up with the name Ronnie Willow. No story, just a name. Just a name. It's great, though. <laughs> then I met my wife. We got married, everything else, and, you know, life happens. And right. it was shelled for a long time. And then probably about four years ago is when I got the idea to start writing, like, a mystery novel mm -hmm. and have her be kind of like a Nancy Drew, modern-day mm -hmm. type you know, sleuth. Yeah. But I also wanted to promote positive characteristics. So one of my underlying themes in this book is integrity, the importance of integrity. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's some growing pains that she goes through with her friends uh, through subplots in the book. Mm -hmm. She auditions for uh, a play, and she's not the type that wants to be in a play, but the boy she likes is in it. <laughs> yeah, so usually the boys <laughs> audition for, because the girls in it. Yeah, so this is the opposite <laughs> on this one. So uh, anyway, so that's and just you know, and there's a friend that she made who she thinks is a competitor for the boy. So it's got the drama in yeah. that and the. Um, Inter intricacies of high school relationships mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to navigate that world of being in a new school and making new friends, competition. Her her friend though, mm -hmm. um, she had lived here all a long time, right? She's Correct. Been, she was born here, right? Correct. All right, so she was a she's a Cape Codder. Yeah, the characters in there, most of them are Cape Codders. There's a uh, the the boy. I actually moved to Cape Cod from the Boston area, so he brings a city perspective and a mm -hmm. little different view to it. Right. Um, she comes from North Carolina, so she's bringing her own view. Right. And there's opportunities that you'll see in the book where those views are shared, and sometimes they don't always work together, and they have to figure it out. So, and there are other elements, you know, the past of the characters and the impact they have on their decisions, and how sometimes we judge people before we know why they're doing things mm -hmm. like that's some things that she learns and works out in it mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of layers and there are a lot of different uh, it's a first in a series so there's other pieces that set up for the next book I see. and the book after so great it's uh it's a pretty uh intricate book and plot so well um i'm wondering if um ronnie um with everything that's happened 
over the last few years. Did that affect Ronnie, or do you even bring that up in this? I stayed away from COVID because when I started writing it, it hadn't happened. The pandemic hadn't happened, and I just I figured it's better to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. There's a vague possible reference in it mm -hmm. I, through a situation with where one of the um, kids had um, lost someone close to them, oh. but I didn't yeah. specify that yeah. at all. Let people because you know, I yeah. figured COVID fatigue at some point. Like people don't <laughs> yeah, want to. Well, I think we all have that. <laughs> exactly. So I just kind of left that alone. That's not even part of it. So that has nothing to do with the book. And how did you get through COVID? And how did your students do through COVID? It was tough. <laughs> so uh, when we went all remote, it was really um, a struggle, I think, for a lot of yeah. people. At first, the kids were like, ooh, vacation, two weeks out of mm -hmm. school. But then two weeks became yeah. three weeks, and it became a month. Right. And the social divide, like just not having that interaction, mm -hmm. to me, that's what hurt kids the most was that lack of social interaction. And we're mm -hmm. still seeing that in school to a point, like no, I, I catching up on that. Yeah. I think that's the part that they need to catch up on as much as the academics. So, mm -hmm. but um, I wrote, I did a lot of writing. I yeah. went outside, I ran, I swam. Yeah, um, kept busy. I did, I was in April, Christian, I was wearing a wetsuit. Your wet wife was always, <laughs> your, oh my gosh, you would be. Your <laughs> wife was probably working the whole time though, right? She was, yes. Although because of, uh, she's in an OBGYN, with the elective surgeries, like hysterectomies oh, and things, they yeah. put those aside. So it was, you know, there was definitely a hit with that right. that they took. Right. But, um, and a lot of stress on her end just because of the nature of it. So Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, so you said you have other books in the works. Yes. And? Um, Can you give me a hint? Halfway through with the second book in the series, Ronnie Willow and the Devil's Shadow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that sounds like a good one. It's the, my plan it's is... It's not political, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The plan is, uh, what I'm working with it is, uh, the, I want the character to grow with the audience mm -hmm. through the series. So she's going to grow up during she's, the series? There's, well, definitely. She's growing through it. through the mm -hmm. So the content will get a little more mature, not inappropriate, mm -hmm. but a little more mature as... Right. as the audience matures with her. Right. So as she grows up, she's going to be less of a freshman and more of a you know sophomore, junior. Yeah. Right. And those uh, the issues she faces will be um, more mature as well. So. I see. All right. And you know all this because you're a teacher. Yes. <laughs> um, so you like living in the Northeast mm -hmm. in New England, and you and you like teaching on Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't change a thing. No, I don't think so. No? <laughs> well, that's good. Unless I became a best-selling writer and that and then, was my full-time job. That that's would true. Be, uh, and then you would buy a giant house on the water and live comfortably ever after. Probably a or nice in flat in the city. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I love Boston. Oh, I know. How and that would not? be fun, yeah. What's your favorite place? In Boston? Yeah. I like the Back Bay area, personally, yeah. so that's my yeah. favorite neighborhood yeah. around there. So. Yeah, it's really pretty. Seaport's nice, too, though. Yeah, it is. It is. And the, but they've got a lot of big hotels. I heard it was sinking. I don't know if that's true <laughs> yes, or not. Yes, that's what I've heard, too. So, <laughs> so we'd stay thought, away from the seaport. I want to stay away from the seaport. You might lose it. Yeah. Um, now, who was your publisher on this book? Seacrow Press, and they are based out of Barnstable, actually. And they've got really? a pretty good stable of authors, a variety of books, poetry. Um, they've got some fiction books, nonfiction. Uh, I think mine was the first young adult book that they published. Wow. So, yeah. That's kind of cool. So that was cool. Yeah. I think they have at least a dozen authors. I'm not sure how many, but they're they're growing like exponentially by the year right And now. they're based here. It just seems they odd are. they are not in New York or Boston or yeah, they're some a, other place. They're a small independent publisher. Yeah. Um, there is a writer who people might know on the Cape who writes some um, children's books as well, but he's get writing some adult books. Um, T.M. Murphy, Ted Murphy. Oh, Ted Murphy, sure, I know Ted. He's yeah. he's going to be publishing books through Sea Crow. He's got oh, one wow. coming out wow. in a few months, I think. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. He wrote Funny. one of the blurbs for the back of my book. He actually, did. So, oh my gosh, yes. that's great. Good, so, yeah. good, good, good. So you live at you live off Cape. Yes. And you commute in. Yes. You go the right way though. You're commuting yes. in instead of <laughs> off. So yeah. you know, except I suppose maybe at night it might it's a little crazy. Mm. No, no not traffic. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I even commute here during the summer too. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. How come? I manage Barnstable Yacht Club in the summers. Oh so. my gosh, you're kidding. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's yeah. What a great building that is. It it's is. a great space, a great spot. Kurt Vonnegut's sure. old haunts. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. I was in, went to a party for somebody who 
was renting his house, knew him, but yeah. was renting the house from him on 6A. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I went into his house, and it was at Christmas, and it was, it was decorated, and he had a <laughs> spiral, you know those big old captain's houses? Yes. Had enclosed spiral staircases. Mm -hmm. So somebody said to me, come take a look at this, and they opened the door to go up, because it had a door at the bottom, and there was the spiral staircase went up, I think it went clear to the to the top floor to the attic. You could get off at certain spots, but it was huge. And all, <laughs> I looked in it, and it was the devil grabbing the toe of an angel and went all the way up to the top. So that the top of the, the angel's head yeah. <laughs> and wings were way up high, and the devil is pull it, trying to pull her down. And I thought, yeah, that's Kurt Vonnegut, that all is. right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> For sure. So yeah, so um, but that's what a great that's a great location though it mm -hmm. is and uh, and what a fun job mm -hmm. um, and working with people that own boats is probably a little bit like working with children definitely <laughs> well I do no I work I actually mostly work with children there. you do oh you do the all the what do they call that tadpole thing or well they have whatever. the classes Mosquito. we have um, sailing classes yeah. uh, swimming classes and tennis classes so oh, I didn't realize you had all that I manage yeah. the staff and the staff are mostly teenagers a lot of them that I either bring from sandwich to oh, work wow, there or their kids who grew up through the yacht club right. this is like probably start my eighth summer doing that this oh, year so I've seen these kids grow yeah. through the years and um, and then the kids are four through 14 for oh the kids gosh. in the classes yeah. and uh, they're all the member kids so it's about 50 kids or so oh usually. my gosh oh that's so great that's usually I play ping pong with them yell at them for climbing on the roof <laughs> <laughs> things like that so the usual stuff spoil them with candy uh, bribe them with candy <laughs> yeah, bribe, bribe. <laughs> so, yeah and send them home exactly yes <laughs> that sounds good so Ronnie Willow and the Silver Mask by W.S. middle name Scott first name <laughs> William Childress oh my gosh um, I just, I mean, I haven't read the whole book yet, mm -hmm. but I'm going to because I love it. And I'm going to then give it, I think, to my um, granddaughter, who's a okay. uh, junior in high school. And I think she'd like it. She likes graphic novels for okay. young adults. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> and and something, some Asian thing. I don't know what it's called. Um, but um, I love the, I love what it says here on the back, though. What secrets we buried, um, what secrets lie buried in an idyllic Cape Cod village? Now see, that sounds scary. I think it sounds like it could be a movie. What do you think? I hope so, it'd be nice. <laughs> the, it'd be perfect. The town I set it in is um, fictional, but it's based, it's kind of a conglomerate of Sandwich and Barnstable. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to mess up the history because I'm not from here. Yeah. And you know how Cape Codders are? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I made up a town named Kent and I took pieces of, um, Sandwich and Barnstable gave him a little new name like Kent Yacht Club is based off Barnstable Yacht Club yeah. instead of uh, Lawrence Pond or um, Peter's Pond I've got um, Ellis Pond yeah uh, well I that's use, a like, big name in Sandwich yeah. Ellis is the so. school is Hoxie Academy it's oh, a perfect. 7 through 12 yeah. school yeah, like sandwiches yeah. so it was just easier to make it my own to fictionalize yeah. it but still maintain the Cape Cod feel there yeah. so you didn't that change was, the outline of Cape Cod. No, 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 did not, did not um, change anything with that. Didn't change the canal. <laughs> did change the canal. No. Um, I didn't. I don't remember. Are her parents? Her she moves up here with her parents, right? Yes. And they're both together, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yes. it's a, it's a, um, it's a family unit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She has a little sister as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her mother. Um, was a was a doctor in North Carolina and is um, not practicing in Cape Cod. Her father, uh, this is a premise that kind of carries through the series, he, what brought them up to Cape Cod is he developed a running shoe that is um, uh, environmentally friendly. So made out of materials that are biodegradable oh. so it doesn't create all the pollution that the plastics and everything that they make running shoes out of. And he found a guy uh, named Marlon Prince who son is the love interest of yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, um, who's a top marathon runner who agrees to wear his shoe in the Boston Marathon. So he uh, opens an office in Boston to try to start building his company, and they moved to Cape Cod because his wife is originally from there. Uh, He's that's not, the, that was the key. Yes, his the, wife's the from there, so they move into like her parents' old house, basically. Yeah. And, um, and then he commutes to Boston. A lot of people commute from Sandwich to yeah, you know, Boston, sure so yeah. this is 
Kent's in a similar area, so he takes the commute for that. And she's okay. currently staying home to help with the family uh, in a new location. So, wow. Yeah. Terrific. So, yeah. Well, I think it's going to be a great success. Thank you. I hope so. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Ronnie Willow and the Silver Mask. Buy it for your grandkids today or your kids or buy it for yourself and read it. Um, how fun is this? It's very fun. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you're you. a very nice man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. You, can, you're, you have an aura. You have that good aura around you, you know. Thank you. And you're very happy. Thank you. Yeah, despite the fact you are a Marine. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, it's so nice to meet you and talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you next time. Yes. <laughs> next book. Promise? Yes, next book. Promise. Okay. okay. Wow, Scott Childress, William Scott Childress is his pen name, and he wrote this fabulous book called Ronnie Willow and the Silver Mask. Oh my gosh. Great interview, great teacher at Sandwich High School. So I want to thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.